and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some Is It Drake's up next in Best of One. Uh, you may remember we played this the same Is It Drake's list uh, maybe about a week ago or so, um, and it was it was impressive. It was fun to play. Uh, one reason why I really wanted to bring it back is uh, I wanted to add Niv Mizzet to it. We didn't play Niv Mizzet before in the Oko meta game. Um, you know, not a good card against Oko. How you just try to play it and they then they would just elk it, um, turn it into an elk, and that was not good. I don't like Niv elk it. I like Niv Mizzet. Um, but now with both that and with Veil of Summer Band, we're expecting more Simic Flash. Even though we really haven't seen Simic Flash too much today, but um, just counter spells in general, uh, like that Teamer Reclamation, things like that. Uh, so Niv Mizzet is uncounterable, um, and so I think that's a, a top end threat that I want to have access to now. If we have it early and we can't cast it, we do have the Royal Scions that we can loot it away as well. So it's not too, um, it's not as like uh, much of an anchor to our deck to to have to like um, to find room for it because we can discard it as well. But yeah, besides that, we got just really good at cheap spells. You know, Opt, Shock, Lava Coil, Negate. Like, these are just all good cheap spells. Um, and then we have some powerful flying threats with Terramander and Crackling Drake. Both of those are really good. Um, Flame Sweep, of course, does not deal damage to our own flying creatures, so we do not kill our Terramanders with Flame Sweep. I'm still going to be playing Aether Gust in the main deck. I think there's a lot of red aggro, and there's still a good amount of green. I think Ether Gus is just fine. You know, we are playing this in best of one. I, I have like the whole deck that we played like kind of before. So if you want to play it in best of three, the deck list uh, command does give you the best of three deck. But we're just going to be playing this um, here in best of one. Um, and then, yeah, we have like negate sabotage that can help protect our threats and everything like that. So let's give this a try. So let's get Is It Drake's. We have played against a lot of Gruul today. So any merit for Ionize over Sabotage. I like, I think that Surveil 1 is more valuable than 2 damage. So like, they're about as easy to cast in this deck. It's not really that, that difficult to cast UU um, instead of uh, UR. They're about... About the same to cast, um, but I do think, like, I would much basically, I'd just rather have surveil one than two damage because not only does surveil one help set up our next draw step, but at times you can also um, put an extra sometimes you maybe can put an extra spell into your graveyard to help uh, help you adapt your terramander easier or. Um, Hmm, Mountain? Or Grow Your Crackling Drake, which, of course, the two damage does better at Growing Crackling Drake. Should have kept the shock. I need another red source for the Niv Mizzet. But kind of, I didn't keep the shock because, uh, you know, we only had we have four lands towards Niv Mizzet. I could be playing Terramander, but I don't want them to be able to just play two creatures, make me sack my Terramander. I want to flame sweep first and get this priest out of here. Why do we have to keep drawing islands? Just just have one of these be a mountain. I don't think I let them untap and then we both draw two. I don't think that's really worth it. Um, yeah, the thing about control after, after the banning, the thing about control is you need to be able to beat aggro and you can't be too clunky with like the flash decks, like basically, I'm, I'm not too interested in uh, 
just gonna get this thing out of here. I'm not too interested in like fires of invention control decks um, against potential other flash decks and real heavy aggro. Um, I'd want to have better uh, cheap instant speed interaction. Need this red land back. By your side, my plan is okay, there we go. Hmm. I right, got one of these. I'm not sure if I just want to put the Royal Silence back on top or if I want to put this Angrass Rampage back on top. Not just the Royal Scions. Niv Mizir. Aren't you using any Castle Vantress? That's a good question. It's a fair question. Why don't I have Castle Vantress? Hmm. Yeah, I don't really have a good answer why I wouldn't have Castle Vantress in here. We'd have 10... Sources to have it come into play untapped. I think it's probably worth it over that seventh island. Okay, there we go. Now we got a Castle Vantress in here. Let's we'll update our decklist command. Now that Castle Vantress is probably gonna cost us here. We're probably just gonna have only like Swift Water Cliffs and Temple of Epiphanies and Castle Vantress. And just not be able to have it on top land, and then we lose. <laughs> and I'll be like, that's why we didn't have it. Now, I, I actually, I honestly like all the dual lands with this deck, because we have a lot of different mana costs in this deck. And just... I like gaining a life. Gaining a life is cool. Hmm. Do I need to have negate up? Potentially. Mardu. Um, I don't think I really need to shock Midnight Reaper, I don't think. Doesn't mean I attack for more damage. I could just shock them. 
just gonna kind of hold this up. I think I'll I'll shock Midnight Reaper before my next turn. Hmm. So maybe I should have just done it then. I kind of wanted to do it on end step, to see if they play anything else, but do it on end step so that, um, so they didn't get that extra card until, until then. That's alright. If we get to untap with Niv Mizzet, we win. This is a do you have removal? You do not, you lose. GG. I don't know if it's actually lethal this turn, but the game's over. Regardless. Yeah, it looks like. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, they have the food. They can sack this for another food, and also they lose. I lose a life. They gain a life. So I could do another two damage if I ether gust one of my things and then negate the ether gust. That'd be another two damage, and then I guess it'd be another four damage because then it would pump the crackling drake twice. So that would get me thirteen damage. But they would. They would sack this, they would gain a life, so they'd go to 13, and then they would also make a food, and they would sack the food and gain three. So I think it's just just safer just to hold up the double negate with these very um, very easy lethal cards for the next turn. So yeah, basically I could do 13. But the other thing is I, I could maybe draw another shock. Um, they would do the last part, but there's only one other shock in the deck, so yeah, we good. Yeah, we don't really. Yeah, so basically, we didn't have to work too hard because yeah, we had triple negate. So vintage Oath, Oath of Druids decks running one Grissel Brand and one Niv Mizzet as payoffs. Dude, yeah, Niv Mizzet is sweet. Yeah, Niv Mizzet's looked strong so far. All right, we're going to scry for some land. Looks like my opponent's at 21. They got an extra life. Perfect. See, if I didn't have the niv Miz in hand, I wouldn't be just be keeping that land. So 
So that's, I guess that's our fifth, you know, now we just drew another land afterwards. So that's a fifth land already. So, so my opponent must have some kind of instant, maybe like Bone Crusher Giant or something. If it's just giving them, you know, or they're playing on full. I would assume they have some kind of instant. Hmm. Blacklands Paragon. That's a good one. I kind of wish I would have just played the island instead of the Swiftwater Cliffs where I could shock and have Aether Gust. Kind of regret that. Hmm. Do I want us both to draw a card and lose a life? Hey, what's up, Rex? Doing great. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the bands. And so, yeah, we got a new format. Been playing against tons and tons of Rakdos so far today. So these Aether Gusts basically just kind of slow the game down. Hopefully it buys me a little time to get to this Niv Mizzet. And hopefully we draw some spells now. I haven't actually drawn a spell yet so far. This game. At least I don't think so. Maybe I drew an Aether Gust for Five. No, I didn't, because I kept a two-lander. So I just guaranteed to get that thing out of here. I could have dealt the one damage to the Crusader so that if they play a removal spell on Niv Mizzet, then we get to do the other damage to the Crusader. Hmm. Jeez. I basically gave myself... I want to play the Crackling Drake first to give myself the option to maybe not play that Flame Sweep. If we had some other just draw effect. Yeah. Yeah, we have... Uh, yeah, we're 3-0 right now, and Niv-Mizzet has been, has been our finisher in every game so far. It's been a big part. Um... It's been great. All right, let's see. Double Temple... Makes our hand pretty slow. But we have Shock for early removal. Crackling Drake and God Eternal Kafnet are good blockers. I don't think we mulligan.
So we'll go ahead and keep. Again, look for land with our temple. Is draw two deck good in this metagame? Um, potentially. I'm not sure, you know, like we don't really have like a too much of a true metagame yet, but it you can, you know, if you have like good cheap interaction and everything. If you're right now a lot of aggro, so you want to have a lot of cheap interaction, it seems like. I mean, lava. Co I'd normally be keeping lava coil in this matchup. That's a good card to have, but I don't. I don't have lands, so I can't keep it. No, it's it's not. No, it's it's not top. No, this is not. This does not mean ninety three percent, like the top ninety three percent of mythic players. That's that's not what that means, because when you reach mythic, you don't just go to zero percent and you try to work your way up. What this means is you're 93% of the way towards towards the top 1,200, basically. Like, you kind of start, like, around the top 1,200, and you lose percentages the more you lose. And then you, like, once you're out of the top 1,200, then... And actually, they may have switched it to 1,500 that they actually rank. Then... <clears throat> then you go down to 99% to the 98%. So you just so the percentages you just go down. Um but you don't start at 0%. There's there's not there's not basically there's not mythic players at, you know, 20%, 30%, 40%. Like there's not players at those levels. So it's not like 93% is 93% better than other mythic players. It's basically No, so so that's what I mean. It's not really that you're part of the 93rd percentile. Cuz 93% is lower than a whole lot of mythic players. Like I'm not sure if it's exact if it's, you know, half or not, but So basically, basically, yes, it does not really mean 93% at all. Um, like what 93% act, like what 93% means is not really what 93% of mythic means. Um... So basically, I just I wasn't playing Royal Scions those two turns because I wanted to be able to keep up Sinister Sabotage. Even though Royal Scions would would basically loot away Sabotage, but we got our four lands. Let's just play. I'm playing my Crackling Drakes to try to hit land drops. Not you know, so I'm not playing Kefnet. I'm going to play the Crackling Drakes to try to hit land drops to get to Niv Mizzet. Um, I am perfectly fine with only playing one spell each turn. Hmm. I should have played the Swift Water Cliffs. Right. Basically, I so I had Mountain. So I had to... I had to play the Mountain so I could hold up blue for Opt. Yeah, Deckmaster is back. Come on, computer, you can do it. Fight through it, you can do it, computer. You don't need to lag, you can do it. So you said... Alright, so... 
statement was these bands set a far more important precedent of magic. Nothing is sacred anymore when it comes to bands, even mythic set mascots. Both Oko and Ren and Six band in their most impressive formats and extremely expensive mythics. That precedent was already set whenever Jace the Mind Sculptor was banned in standard. You know, it was like a hundred dollar card whenever it was banned in standard. It was the the face of standard. You know, it was a mythic. It wasn't like the the newest set in standard. But it was still, even though it wasn't the newest set in standard, it was still the face of standard. And the most expensive card by a long ways. That precedent was has already been set. That mythic set mascots can get banned. <laughs> I, I don't know why Rule of Law was in our opponent's night deck. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, frames are so overrated nowadays. You don't need frames. Yeah, 4 and 0. Oh. Yeah, I like this deck. This deck's solid. Alright, so how do we handle Cauldron Familiar on the draw? With a pretty expensive hand. So if we're gonna lose a game, this is a likely loss for us. I want to coil Cauldron Familiar. But I think we have to coil Dreadhorde Butcher. According to Wizards, the percentage next to the name is percentile among mythic ranked players. There. They're not really being truthful there. That's not that's not how it works. Um a person at ninety three percent is worse than most of the players in Mythic. Because there's just not that many Mythic players. Because it resets each month. I guess I have to do this. That was a really bad turn for me. Them having, you know, familiar Gutter Bones and Witches Oven. That was a really bad turn for me. So discarding spells is good for, for Terramander. We'll kind of just discard these counter spells here. Yeah, but there, there's not that many mythic players. Like there's. Ugh, that's a great card too. All right, looks like my opponent's got this one. Uh, surveil one's more valuable than two damage. That's why we're playing Sabotage over Ionize. I talked about that one earlier.
I don't really, I don't think I have anything to stop this witch's oven right now. Unfortunately, my life total is too low to be attacking. So they just had a, a really good start. Turn one familiar. With familiar into um, dread horde butcher into familiar than gutter bones than witch's oven on the play, they got us. Yep, they're going to just do the last five damage by just bringing this. By just keep sacrificing the the cat. All right, so if I if I make this attack, they sack Cauldron Familiar, they bring them both back, I go down to two, they can attack with both, I block one, I go down to one, they sack, and then they do one, so I take lethal. So if I, if I attack here, I take lethal. If I don't attack, I can stay alive for a turn. Is there any way I can do 18 damage? There's no. I'm going to die the next turn anyway. So my only way to win this is them not play correctly. Darn. Looks like they're playing correctly. All right, four and one. Oh yeah, and that Angrass Rampage, that was huge also, getting rid of my Royal Scions. So yeah, just this awesome opener there. GG's. All right, so four and one. All right, better hand, not all, not all tap lands and stuff. Mountain. They're probably playing mono red. At least we have a mountain of evidence that they are. I know I'd like to be able to use Flame Sweep on that, but I don't think we should risk it.
No, I yeah, basically no. I would just I wouldn't I wouldn't really change anything for this deck for best of three. Um, yeah, basically no. Like I, I have the sideboard that the deck can use as well. Um, here, but no, I don't think you really need to change anything for best of three. Um, I guess, I guess. With that being said, the sideboard may need to be tuned more for the Witches Oven Cauldron Familiar combo than what it currently is. That's a possibility. So this is the sideboard that I have is a sideboard that we used about a week ago whenever we played it uh, before, and so I don't, I don't know exactly how good that sideboard is against. Like, if we have enough for Witch's Oven, basically. And if not, we need to add something there. Keep the Kefnet back to block the Bone Crusher Giant. Hmm. Uh. I guess I shouldn't have shocked. I shouldn't have done the second shock, I guess. I should have just held up Sinister Sabotage to counter Ember Cleave. Yeah, that was, that was... I should have just held up Sabotage to counter that thing. I was already doing so great. That's my bad. Yeah, I'm going to kind of see if they do anything. But yeah, I, I can adapt the Terramander. Well, I messed this game up by not holding up Sinister Sabotage that turn. I opened myself up to Ember Cleave and paid for it. So, Ether Gust is about all I can find. I'm still taking lethal, I guess, with Ether Gust. Because of the Bone Crusher Giant's ability to do two damage to me. Uh, I played that very poorly. 
well, I, I basically was just too overconfident and just played my shock that I had. Um, that was bad. And that happens. Just gotta learn and, um, you know, learn and improve. Because I should know, like, the only way I was losing that game there was Embercleave. And so all I had to do was just keep my mana available for countering Embercleave, which I had a counter spell. The only card that could beat me. But I didn't. Um, so, you know, learn and uh, do that next time. Yeah, Terramander is a large creature that ends games quickly. It's just a really good card, basically. That's what Terramander's doing in the deck, just being a really good card. Yeah, that's true. You do learn more from losing than winning. Well, that hurts. Enjoy the proper application of knowledge. Not going to attack against the three two reach, of course. <laughs> then I'm very knowledgeable. <laughs> Okay, so this is Gruel. Gruel doesn't play very many 1-1s. One I kind of want to just trade here and make Lovestruck Beast worse. The other thing is, is if this is Gruel Adventures, Rimrock Knight will now kill Royal Scions. Bone Crusher Giant. Land drop. Gross. So I'm using this right now so that uh, I'm using the Lava Core right now so that if we draw a land, we get to start crackling Drake. Um, if it's not a red, you know, obviously it has to be a red land. If it's not a red land, we can adapt to Terramander as well. Hehehe. <laughs> Yeah, no more Oko. Hey, Moho. 
I'm glad you're enjoying Rack of Spirit. Ain't so much fun. Yeah, I really like that deck too. So yeah, glad you're liking it. That is a fun one. Connection lost. That's not something I see very often. Played a slot, slightly modified version of your Orzhov Sacrifice deck today and won all five games in the event. It was so much fun. That's awesome, Iron Dash. Happy to hear. Y'all are crushing out there. All right, GG opponent. Very good. Very good hand. Just good interaction. Yeah. Better hand than I had. My hand was a little, a little awkward. GG's. Hey, Vigito. All right, so four and three. Lost three in a row there. Um, so that's disappointing, losing the last three. But as you know, one of those, the, the mono red one had no business being a loss, but I just made a very wrong decision um, to not hold up counter magic when the only thing that could possibly beat me was Ember Cleave. And of course... I did not hold up counter magic for that turn. They had Ember Cleave, and I lost. So could have easily been a 5-2, but yeah, this is a Drake's a pretty good deck. Um, you saw though sometimes like against that Gruel deck how Niv Mizzet looked really expensive. Um, but the other one, the other times, you know, like the first few matches, Niv Mizzet was was awesome and it was winning us the games as well. Um, may need more. Again, I think the one thing that the deck probably needs is more sideboard stuff for Witch's Oven. And I don't know what exactly that would be. I don't know if you just play um, Graftigger's Cages. Um, you know, Spyglass, of course, is an option. But Graftigger's Cage is just cheaper. Uh, Graftigger's Cage doesn't really affect our deck here, so that could be an option. Um... Or maybe like you know red destroy artifact cards, you know there's there's just not really very good ones. Um, but yeah, so that's that's something that to maybe keep in mind with the uh, sideboard. But um, let's see, yeah, yeah, there's there is like shield breaker and stuff like that, but it's just not it's not great. Uh, no, I wouldn't. No, I would not. Uh, I guess like with best of one, yeah, with best of one, maybe you could play, you could take out like, two, yeah, you could maybe play some Fey of Wishes instead of some of this Sinister Sabotage, Ether Gust, Negate. Sabotage looked a little slow in best of one there. And yeah, I guess if you want to make a, a wish board and play a couple of Fey of Wishes, it's not it's not the worst thing, but it's it's very expensive and, and slow. I, I wouldn't really recommend it, to be honest. I think that you just try to win quickly with adapted Terramanders and Crackling Drakes. That's the that's the goal of the deck here. Um, uh, Agent of Treachery, just yeah, it's just too expensive. I mean, it's like before playing Niv Mizzet with the deck. I put Niv Mizzets in here because the the. The, there's a good amount of counterspell decks with best of one. Honestly, best of three, 
or even even just in, in general, we didn't really play against that many counterspell decks. Maybe you just want to put the Niv Mizzets in the sideboard. Because the good thing about putting Niv Mizzets in the sideboard is that you get to loot away lands more. Uh, if you if your curve tops out at four, you get to just um, loot away lands more with like your Royal Silence, and you opt you can make sure you can just put more lands down to the bottom and things like that. And like with your temples, you know you can <clears throat> you don't have to keep lands as much. Except for like you know, whenever you have Niv Mizzet here, you have to keep lands a little bit more. Um, but there we go. Uh, that's is it to Drake's. So if you're uh, watching this video later on YouTube, uh, you know what to do. Hit that like button and uh, leave some comments, of course, um, as well. And then um, also, like I mentioned before, if you want to see uh, read my comments on the new bands that just happened today, hope you head on over to the Patreon page and check those out. It's just $3 a month um, where you get billed at the first of the month. So if you sign up, you don't actually get billed, um, but you can... Uh, Check out my thoughts there. There's a link down below, um, but also just patreon.com slash Todd Um, But that's it here for Is It Drakes. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.